Understanding a company's entire data warehouse architecture can feel overwhelming, but when you cut out the noise, you'll find that there's typically one of two high level approaches being followed, ETL or ELT. Understanding the differences between the two will help you both better understand your architecture and also give you confidence to hop into pretty much any other one. At the core, both ETL and ELT are two similar but different strategies for moving data from a source system to a destination and applying business logic. So in this video, I'll explain what both of these things are, their differences, and then give my take on which one is actually better. First, we'll start with ETL, which stands for Extract, Transform, Load. As the acronym implies, in this scenario, we first extract the data from a source system, and then this is followed immediately by applying transformations, aka business logic, to that extracted data. We then finally load that transformed data into some final tables where it can be consumed by end users and reporting tools if you have something like Power BI or Tableau. A key point in this approach is that the transform process will only run against data that is extracted during the same run. And to make this possible, this extracted source data is first moved typically to a temporary storage location. You may hear this referred to as the staging layer or something else, but what all this means is that it's just another database or schema being used for this purpose. Now the data in this staging layer is then truncated or cleared out to get ready for the next run. Example tools that you'd see when working with ETL processes are Microsoft SSIS, Informatica, Talon, et cetera. All right, so now what about ELT? And as you might have already guessed, the letters represent the exact same concepts, but now they're just in a different order. And so in this approach, the workflow is extract, load, transform, and this is typically seen as a more modern approach for reasons we'll discuss here shortly. In an ELT scenario, we again first extract the data, but this time instead of landing it in a temporary staging area, the data is going to get loaded into a more permanent table or a permanent location. This is where you might see the concept of a data lake thrown around. These tables will continue to grow with each run and is going to act essentially as a historical reference for all data in a particular source. Finally, the transformations are applied to this much larger data set, which will also include logic to create custom data models. Now, because the extracted data is not being cleared with each run, you can extract the data as frequently as you like and run your transformations at a completely separate time. There's nothing tying these activities together like you see in an ETL process where all of the steps need to happen within the same run. Also, rather than relying on a staging table for the latest data, you can instead apply filters on the new larger data table within your transform logic. For those that do choose this ELT approach, you'll often see multiple specialized tools within your workflow rather than just having one that handles everything all together. So a few of the many examples here that we could see are Fivetran or Stitch for the extract and loading. You could also use streaming tools like Apache Kafka or AWS Firehose to extract data in a more real-time fashion. And then obviously DBT is my favorite for the transformation component of an ELT process. Now, before we can settle on this answer, there are a few additional things that we need to first point out or discuss. So as we mentioned, the main difference between these two approaches comes with the loading and transformation steps. With data storage becoming much cheaper and companies continuing to move to the cloud, there's essentially no limit on how much you can store. These modern databases are also incredibly powerful and can parse over insane amounts of data very efficiently. Having said that, they're not really well suited for a lot of truncating, reloading, or individual record updating. Considering the desire for data availability, the trend towards more specialized tools, and the capability of modern cloud databases, if I were starting from scratch today, I would go with the ELT approach. So this approach will leave you with more tools, which will also add complexity to your architecture, but it's a more scalable model and the benefits outweigh those downsides in my personal opinion. ETL is by no means dead and there are still so many companies still using this particular approach. Frankly, it can be a massive undertaking to try to change this type of infrastructure, which means there are still going to be a ton of companies still successfully every day running their architecture in an ETL format. Let me know in the comments what you think and what you've worked on in the past. Thanks as always for watching and I'll see you at the next video.